Hi, my name is Gregor Quack. I'm a PhD candidate in the History of Art Department, and I currently work as a graduate curatorial assistant at the Yale University Art Gallery. Today, I want to introduce you to two paintings that recently entered the Yale University Art Gallery's collection through a gift by the Friday Foundation. The three-tiered untitled painting on the left and number 11, yellow, green, and black on the right. Both works are by the painter Mark Rothko. They measure around the same size and were completed only a few years apart in 1942 and 1950, respectively. Yet, at first glance, these two works of art seem to have very little in common. The most obvious difference is that the earlier painting contains seemingly recognizable figurative elements, whereas the later work simply shows solid blocks of color. But despite this first impression, I want to suggest that the difference between the two canvases is not quite so clear cut. To explain what I mean, let's look more closely at the three layers of the earlier work. In the top row, the crowd of faces could suggest a portrait gallery or even a party scene. Once we look closer though, we also find that the individual faces are actually melding into one another. On the left side, the hairline of one face in profile turns into a brow ridge for the face immediately to its right, this one in a frontal view. In turn, the frontal face's left eye becomes the right eye of yet another face in profile. The middle row in pale green and orange is even harder to decipher. Curved orange lines on the right might depict crashing waves, but further left, the lines combine with sharp angles, which might resemble the profiles of ancient Greek helmets. In the bottom row, we are left to decide for ourselves whether the undulating shapes are simply abstract squiggles, or if we're really looking at claws or talons reaching in from above. Mark Rothko painted this work during an important turning point in his life and career. He was born Markus Yakovlevich Rothkowitz to Latvian Jewish parents in 1903. The family immigrated to the US, where young Marcus would often feel marginalized and like an outsider. He eventually discovered painting and began to paint city scenes, but soon felt dissatisfied with his lack of success. In 1942, the year before he made our untitled painting, he signaled his desire for a clean break by anglicizing his own name to Mark Rothko. He also stopped creating new work for almost an entire year, and instead devoted his time to reading books like Friedrich Nietzsche's Birth of Tragedy. For Rothko, this book was a welcome counterweight to American mainstream sensibilities, which he found to be nationalistic and small-minded. He was fascinated by Nietzsche's attempt to develop a universal aesthetic theory by using examples from ancient Greece. With that in mind, perhaps the terracotta brown color of the top row should tell us that we might be looking at a row of clay masks of the kind that actors in ancient Greek drama used to turn into mythical heroes. The painting's three level structure may be a reference to the strips of a Greek temple frieze, as in these examples from the Yale University Art Gallery's collection. For Rothko, the masks and mythological figures evoked a period when art was not concerned with trivial commerce, but with the big epic questions of human existence. Without monsters and gods, he once wrote, art cannot enact our drama. Art's most profound moments express this frustration. Now, what does all of that have to do with number 11, yellow, green, and black. Well, after a few years of his so-called mythic paintings, number 11 is one of the first works in which Rothko moved on to the purely abstract style that would later make him famous. 
In these new works, no mythical symbols are left. Fogs of red and yellow color let the canvas exude a deep, even ominous glow. As with the three registers in the untitled work, three colors float in an unspecified space. A block of solid yellow and another of dull black are separated by a sharp green line. If we didn't know about Rothko's past interest in ancient Greek drama, we might assume that here he was simply focusing on the act of painting itself. But because we know the path that brought him here, we can assume that he actually wanted his paintings to be more than just brush strokes and color on a canvas. As Roth Rothko himself put it, quote, I am not an abstractionist. I am not interested in the relationship of color or form or anything else. I'm interested only in expressing basic human emotions, tragedy, ecstasy, doom. With abstract paintings like number 11, Rothko wanted to pull viewers into the colors, not as an end in itself, but because he had noticed that in modern times, ancient myths had lost some of their power. To evoke the same epic emotions in their audience, artists needed to work with more direct and contemporary means, that is, with bold and intense masses of pure color.